Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here and today I'll be covering Assassination Rogues in 8.3. For this guide, we used footage from Waz, the current BlizzCon champion, and consulted Alessia, a multi-rank 1 rogue. Make sure to follow both of their streams if you want to watch high-rated rogue gameplay. This guide will cover essences, traits, gearing, talents, rotation, and of course the playstyle of an Assassination Rogue in 8.3. Luckily for an assassination rogue, your essences are pretty much set in stone, having a couple of ones that you can substitute situationally. The major essence you'll use nearly all the time is Breath of the Dying. It gives a ton of extra damage, which can be very powerful during offensive setups to have extra kill potentials, or get quicker momentum if they are full health. Make sure when using this essence you use it when they are above 80% or below 20% so you can benefit from the massive cooldown reduction which makes this major essence more powerful. The other major essence you could use is Conflict and Strife, which will only be taken if you need more defensive PvP talents, but is mainly taken if you want that extra versatility during stuns so you don't die as easily. For your minor essences, they will usually consist of Conflict and Strife, Memory of Lucid Dreams, and Vision for Perfection. Vision for Perfection will make your Vendetta a 1.5 minute cooldown, making it extremely powerful for more pressure throughout an arena game. Memory of Lucid Dreams gives a bit of extra self-healing and versatility when it procs. More importantly though, it can refund 50% of energy spent, which gives you increased energy regeneration, allowing you to deal more damage during a game. The Conflict and Strife Miner gives you a chunk of extra versatility, which as you can see is easy to maintain the 8 stacks of in PvP. The only backup option you could take is playing with the Crucible Miner instead of Conflict and Strife. This is for maximum DPS and probably only used in niche situations where you aren't too worried about taking pressure. For your Azeret traits, there are quite a few mini variations depending on what you have, but your best in slot will look something like this. 1 Shrouded Suffocation, 2 Battlefield Focus or Precisions, 2 Twist the Knife, and 1 Nothing Personal. Shrouded Suffocation gives your Garot extra combo points plus more damage when used in stealth. This is excellent for building more damage in both single and multi-target situations. Twist the Knife or Battlefield will be the traits you want to stack as they give you the most damage. You want to prioritize Battlefield as it gives more damage. However, you only have access to two Battlefields on your gear, so you're limited to a maximum of two Battlefields. If unable to get two for now, you can use one Battlefield and stack three Twist the Knife traits. Lastly, having one Nothing Personal trait helps increase your single target burst damage during Vendetta, as well as give you energy regen. Even though it's a nice trait, it can be dispelled as it's a poison, making it less valuable against teams that can deal with it. For your minor traits, now that they are nerfed, they are less needed. Although if you can, picking up the extra self-healing ones is the best. Gearing your character remains a vital step to performing better in Arena, as your gear matters now more than ever. This means having the right stat priority, which is versatility, then haste, then mastery, then crit. Versatility gives you slightly more damage and a lot of damage reduction, making it powerful for assassination rogues as you could be too squishy without it. Haste will give you the most DPS wise, with mastery falling a bit behind and crit being avoided as much as possible. Trinkets are also extremely powerful right now, especially if you can get your hands on the best ones. These are the Drestagath Trinket and the Remote Guidance Device. Drestagav is probably the most OP melee DPS trinket right now, making it a necessary trinket to have. It deals instant incredible damage on single target conditions, as well as being off the global, making it easy to use. The remote guidance device is also a powerful trinket, giving high burst as well, but being a two minute cooldown, having a travel time, and having its damage being soaked at times. You can split it up with your spine trinket, having other burst offensive goes with the trinket itself to deal big damage. The travel time makes it more predictable from the spine, but it remains a solid trinket and should be your second trinket slot choice. 
If unable to get access to PvE trinkets, you can still use the PvP trinkets as backup. Playing with the insignia is nice to have extra damage, procking the extra agility often with a flat out versatility. The badge or medallion is also nice as you can use it with your vendettas, provided you don't use the vision minor essence. When playing against high burst teams such as Iron Paddy, you may opt for the emblem in order to help survive their offensive setups better, as it's an incredibly powerful defensive trinket when used well. As for corruption gear, if you play with a Disc Priest often, then Twisted Appendages is by far the best. It does a ton of damage, and with Disc Priest shields, they will be much more difficult to kill, adding to your increased damage. It will proc on close by targets, and if left free, can deal a lot of damage, being able to overwhelm targets easily if you have high corruption versions of Twisted Appendage. One important thing to note when playing with this corruption is that whilst the tentacle is up, you won't drop combat, so you won't be able to re-stealth if you try to shadow melt. If unable to get Twisted Appendage or play with a Disc Priest, then Infinite Stars or Gushing Wound are your next best bet. Infinite Stars gives a ton of extra damage with high corruption costs, dealing big bursts and forcing the enemy healer to dispel high stacks of it. Gushing Wound is the most valuable DPS corruption in terms of damage output per corruption cost, and will be incredibly powerful even with just one piece of it, gaining even more value with multiple pieces. If unable to get any of those, then having Versatile and Surge of Vitality are decent as well, giving extra versatility, which is nice for extra damage plus damage reduction. Versatile will be your best one as it gives a flat out extra amount of versatility whilst costing less corruption. If you have the golden mats, you could look to craft gear from leatherworking, being able to potentially craft legs and feet with haste and versatility plus a socket being excellent stat pieces to have. Another piece of gear you could farm for are the braces from Mechacon Junkyard, which gives an on-use effect of extra damage over 8 seconds, being extremely powerful for braces. These could be worth to farm since you want the guidance trinket too, having both both of them drop from the same mythic dungeon. When it comes to your normal talents, these are all set in stone as well for assassination rogues as they are all very powerful and pretty much irreplaceable with the other talents in the same tier. The only one worth considering is elaborate planning, which can be used against holy paladin teams if your poisons are being spam dispelled. As for your PvP talents, your main three will usually consist of smoke bomb, system shock, and mind numbing poison. Smoke bomb is a powerful cooldown, which can mostly be used offensively to force trinkets or defensive cooldowns from the enemy team. You you mainly want to smoke bomb on targets so you can keep locked down in a kidney shot so that they either have to trinket it or you can force other defensive cooldowns required you have pressure. You could also use it when enemy targets are low on health to deny heals as a form of chain CC which can also force defensive cooldowns. Mind numbing poison gives you a considerable amount of extra damage on your target throughout the game. Be careful when playing with it though as it is known to currently be breaking blinds if the debuff is up so make sure you know what it looks like. Playing with system shock gives extra burst damage as well as a 90% snare which can be useful for smoke bomb plays or peeling enemy melee off your partners. It only lasts a couple of seconds though making it not so useful in certain situations however its main impact is that it provides provides extra damage. One PvP talent you may swap with often is maneuverability, as it removes snares on your sprint, allowing you to get out of heavy snares such as Chains of Ice, which means it's nice against DK teams. Death from above can also be a niche talent to take, which will mainly be used as a gap closer preemptively against targets that you struggle to maintain uptime with otherwise. For example, you could use it on a monk if they are about to teleport, or on a mage that will go for shimmer plays. Assassination rogues have an immense amount of pressure, being one of the most aggressive classes in the game, so it's important to maximize damage from your rotation. The best way to achieve this is through multi-dotting, where you can spread your gura and rupture to two targets as much as possible, which is especially powerful in 2v2. You can also spread your gura during re-stealths or with vanish and shadow meld in order to create big garots on your enemy targets due to your subterfuge giving you 80% extra damage on garot as well as shrouded suffocation giving extra damage with your garot as well. This way you will get amazing pressure with your garot allowing you to build pressure with more ease. It will also give you more energy regen as you have multiple bleeds up which will further increase your damage output. Then it comes down to your burst pressure which is another important part of a sass as you rely on your burst windows to get kills or force defensive cooldowns. First of all you want to have bleeds up before you kidney shot in order to have your maximum energy regen before you burst. Then you want to use marked for death into kidney shot 
into a toxic blade for maximum pressure. Then if you want to commit even more pressure, you'll pop your vendetta with it when you want to deal maximum damage. If you do this well and at the right time, you should at least force big defensive cooldowns or land kills if the enemy team doesn't have access to any. In general, assassination rogues have a very aggressive playstyle, but there are major things you need to perform in every game in order to maximize your spec. At the start of games, it's important to try and have good openers in order to maximize your stealth opener, giving you more pressure and crowd control options. With a mage, a typical opener is using a cheap shot on the healer, followed with a garrot into kidney shot on your kill target. Then you can use other offensive cooldowns and with help from your teammates, keep crowd controlling the healer to maintain momentum on your kill target. As you can see in this game, Waz is able to dismantle a top rogue mage paddy with the help of Raikou and Mare due to having an excellent opener. Winning openers may not happen too often, but either way, it's important to maintain max pressure as an assassination rogue throughout the game. We explained this earlier by spreading bleeds being a great way for multi-target pressure, but another way is to make offensive goes with your kidney shot. The main way to use kidney shot is on your kill target when you have big damage. This will shut down the target from playing but it should also force big defensive cooldowns if you burst properly, with crowd control on the enemy healer. In few situations, you could use it as a form of crowd control on enemy healers. If you are confident, you can create more pressure this way on your DPS target. Another major playstyle is making great use of your smoke bomb, blind, and vendettas offensively. When using smoke bomb offensively, the best way is to have kidney paired with it, so your target cannot escape the smoke bomb. This way, you can force defensive cooldowns with more ease, getting value of your smoke bomb and getting closer to your win conditions. As for blind, this is mainly used on enemy healers whilst you create pressure on DPS targets. Make sure you have Vanish or Shadow Mode ready during this, so you can follow up with a Sap in order to create even more crowd control. This long crowd control chain will most likely force an enemy healer's trinket, or big defensive cooldowns for your kill targets to survive. If they are unable to trinket these or have big defensive cooldowns to survive, then you can easily take them down with good pressure. You could use Blind to bait out a healer's trinket, but this is only a viable strategy if you have damage on your target, otherwise good healers won't be fooled by the bait. Most of the time though, you will mainly use use it for big pressure, to get defensive cooldowns or land kills. You may use this defensively to peel the enemy DPS only in dire situations, if your teammates aren't able to survive otherwise, and if those DPS players don't have a trinket to get out of the blind. Much like your smoke bomb usage, with Vendetta you want to have Kidney ready so you can create maximum pressure with it. Pulling this off well with your damage abilities will create a ton of pressure, forcing the enemy to use defensive cooldowns, which can lead to kills if they don't react well enough. Assassination isn't always about great offensive plays, as sometimes you may need to play defensively, which means you must utilize your self-defensive cooldowns well. This involves good use of your Cloak of Shadows and Evasion cooldowns, as these are your lifesaver defensive cooldowns. You should use these defensive cooldowns if you are about to die to the corresponding type of damage, or you can pair it well with offensive cooldowns, such as Waz does here, using Evasion to counteract coordinated assault. Outside from that, you also want to make good use of your Faint and Crimson Vial, as both of these are nice defensives on a much shorter cooldown. This should be used a bit preemptively when you're taking heavy fire and want to try and save the use of Cloak or Evasion, allowing you to hold onto your big defensive cooldowns. Even though Faint is extremely powerful due to elusiveness, be careful not to spam Faint too much, as it can make you more energy starved, preventing you from dealing a lot of pressure, which could be more valuable in most situations. Vanish will be the last defensive cooldown you want to use, as it's such a powerful offensive cooldown. However, in situations where you're about to die and have no other way of living, then you should use this in order to survive. Here for instance, Waz is taking heavy fire and has no Cloak of Shadows ready, dropping low on health. He shadow steps to the demon hunter, but also uses his vanish to make sure he doesn't die. This ensures his survival as he's able to line aside the DK whilst cheap shotting the demon hunter for his priest to heal him back up. It's also worth noting that you could use both your evasion and cloak for offensive situations when you are sure you can pull off great aggression and not cost your team to lose the game. Here for instance, Waz wants to maintain pressure on the mage and force more defensive cooldowns in a situation where he believes he can do so. So he uses cloak of shadows, allowing him to keep up on the mage, forcing cauterize as well as the pain suppression from the disc priest, being two big defensive cooldowns forced. 
Be careful doing this too much as it will make you vulnerable to swap attempts on you, which can lead to you dying if you don't have these cooldowns defensively. Last but not least, you want to use your mobility time well during the game, which involves great use of your shadow step and your sprint cooldowns. Sprint is mainly used when you play with maneuverability, which should be used for breaking heavy snares on yourself when you want to play aggressive. As for shadow step, this has more versatile uses, but will mainly be great for multiple offensive purposes. The main way of using this is to simply connect to your target of choice and use it followed by a kidney shot. To lock down elusive targets that could otherwise be hard to keep connecting on. You could also look to shadow step enemy healers for follow up crowd control such as a kick or a kidney shot. This can be used when unable to get other crowd control on the enemy healer and you want to keep them in crowd control if a kill is in sight. You want to make sure you have good momentum and that your partners can't land CC so you don't waste your cooldowns to get CC yourself. When taking heavy fire you can also use shadow step defensively in order to avoid heavy damage if you can't survive otherwise. This means using it on targets far away from your current range which could be used on your partners in order to get out of troublesome situations and survive well. That covers everything on Assassination Rose in 8.3. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a plus skill and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. I'll see you on the next video guide. Thanks for watching.